Welcome to Catchy Cartoons. Today we're going to draw B is for Bear as one of my Animals of the Alphabet series. So let's get drawing and learn those ABCs. First we'll start by blocking in some simple shapes and forms. This rough drawing will serve as a guide for the proportions and the pose. A circle for the head, an eye and center line to anchor the facial features, We'll give our bear little beady eyes with a surprise expression. A big snout, and the muzzle should be about two-thirds the length of his face. To push his expression, we'll give him a downturned mouth. He should have little ears. We'll give him a bit of a forward lean as we draw a long teardrop shape at a bit of an angle. We'll rough in a circle for his chest. Indicate the bottom of his neck with a V, and then the center line down his body. I'm favoring the right side as I want him to be facing right, with his head turned towards the camera. Unless you have a specific pose in mind, avoid straight up poses, as they tend to look lifeless. Since he is a big lumbering character, he should have thick short legs bent at the knees, which will make him look heavy. And will give him big flat floppy feet. For his arms, we'll bend the elbows outwards and let the forearms hang down. This will make his arms look big and powerful, also muscle bound. And of course a little tail. Now we're ready to refine, adjust and push these shapes as we start to bring this bear to life in the tie down stage. I like to start the tie down stage with the eyes and face as they're the most important aspect of the drawing. Remember to stay loose. You're still searching and exploring these shapes and forms. The committed line can lead to stiff and lifeless drawing. We'll give him furry cheeks. So his head doesn't look like it's plopped onto his neck, we'll add some fur under his chin and extend it down his throat. The top of his head and ear should be furry. And now we're starting to see his head take form. We'll turn this bear into a grizzly by adding a hump at the back of his shoulders. A straight line for his back, and to make him look heavier, we'll add some more volume to his bum. The left foot doesn't look very floppy or flat, so we'll thin it out a bit. Add some definition to his leg. I think he'd look kind of funny with a saggy crotch, as if he's wearing a pair of ill-fitting pants. As we do the front of the body, we'll angle the line inwards up along his belly, and then outwards as we sketch the fur along its chest. And we'll continue up the ruff for his neck. We've now indicated a little pot belly and the rib cage, giving the drawing form and dimension. His arm should have a thick furry shoulder and elbow. Apply a subtle curve inwards down the forearm and then out as you approach the hand. This will create the illusion of his hand. We'll add a little spice to the drawing by adding a little contrast to the curved underside of his forearm as we draw a straight line up along the top of his forearm. Always try to look for opportunities to play straights against curves. Add some claws as we finish the other arm. A thick furry chest. We'll add a color separation line to his belly. And we'll finish this tie down pass by giving the bear a thick furry tail. The second tie down pass is where I define the line with small adjustments and by applying a darker, more committed line. We'll adjust the shape of his muzzle by angling the bottom half inwards towards his mouth. We'll make his chin a touch smaller and push his expression by thickening his mouth, particularly the left side. As I move on to the head and body, I'm going to keep my drawing somewhat loose as I'm still looking for that right line. It gives the fur a rough, lifelike quality. I like the cheeks to be furry as it would react to the mouth and is aesthetically pleasing, but make sure to keep it simple and clean so it's not distracting. The fur at the top of the head should be thick. 
There should be a part in the middle of his head, and the fur should stand up and then fall down along either side of the head. When drawing fur, you should always be aware of where the fur is long or short, how the fur reacts to the different parts of the body, is it smooth, does it separate or fall off the body, and most importantly, what looks good. I also like to add fur when the line changes direction, such as the hump, the bear's bottom, or its chest, as it helps to define the character's anatomy. The fur on the shoulder, back of the elbows and the knees should look displaced due to the movement of the limbs. Last but not least, vary the shapes and sizes of the tufts. Do not draw them uniformly as it leads to a boring drawing. We'll define the tail and move on to the cleanup stage. The cleanup line is the last stage of the drawing process. It is where we apply our final and committed line. We'll start by applying a fairly tight line to the eyes. We'll make the line a little thicker at the top to give a hint of the upper lid. We'll square off the muzzle a touch and we'll push the expression with a little adjustment to his mouth. This will also make the chin smaller. Normally I'd continue with the fairly tight line with nice thick and thins for the remainder of the drawing, but today I'm going to apply a nice loose line because I want to try to retain the life and vitality of my tie-down drawing for the fur. Take note, you shouldn't be tracing the tie-down line, you're still drawing. Don't worry about closing all the lines, the odd double line, or the density of the line being inconsistent. This adds life to the drawing. This method of cleanup may lead to some small accidents, but they can always be fixed. And also some happy accidents may occur, such as the head changing from a round shape to a slight turn up shape. I'll apply a thick line across his belly for the color separation and finish his tail. Now this bear is ready for some color. We'll color the bear brown, Apply a lighter brown to his belly to make him a bit more interesting to look at. We'll use the same light brown for his muzzle. I've given him a purple nose for fun and amber eyes so they'll pop. Now that all the color has been applied, you've just drawn a big lumbering bear. Please hit the like button if you like this video. If you want to see more catchy cartoons videos, click the subscribe button. Hit the bell button to be notified of the next catchy cartoons video. Please share this video and be sure to add a comment. And send me your bear drawing. You never know, it just might appear in an upcoming catchy cartoons video. Thanks for watching.